After a bombshell accusation from Madoff whistleblower Harry Marco Polos regarding GE's accounting, GE CEO Larry Culp is defending the struggling, com struggling company, calling it stock manipulation. But as regulators start to take a look at, at GE and Marco, Marco Polos's report, what exactly will they be looking for? And could this be a case of market manipulation? Or what if he was actually right? Joining us right now is Dickinson Wright partner, Jacob Frankel. He's a former Securities and Exchange Commission enforcement lawyer. Also, Calorama partner CEO Harvey Pitt, who's the former Securities and Exchange Commission chairman. Gentlemen, welcome to both of you. And let me just ask what you thought at first blush about all of this. Harvey, we'll start with you. Well, I think this is um, pretty much a grandstand play by Mercopolis. Um, he's gone public with very, very loaded allegations that were designed to have an impact on the market. On the other hand, of course, there is a fundamental question about whether or not his allegations are correct. And until that's known, I think it's hard to categorize him as having been a manipulator. Jacob, you think this steps up the pressure on the SEC to look not only into Marco Polos's actions, but also into GE and the counting underneath? Absolutely. And I agree with, I agree with Harvey and, and to your point, Becky, the, 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 there really is an obligation to look at both sides, whether the allegations have merit with respect to, with respect to GE. And the impression is the SEC is already looking at that. But also whether Mar Markopoulos's activities were, in fact, manipulative, because I think often the SEC will give... I don't want to say a pass, but may not look at, as seriously at people who have actually assisted the SEC in the past. Mm -hmm. Here is a real opportunity. There is a r issue in the markets called short and distort, where people actually use materially false information in connection with shorting the stock. We have not seen that many SEC enforcement cases in that area. It is a problem, and this is an opportunity you know, to pursue it. I, I was going to ask you about that, because you look at something like this. How is this different than what Bill Ackman has done in the past in some of these situations, or maybe what some of the guys at Ira Sohn's conference have done, where they come out and they give you their best short? My expectation has always been that they have lined up their positions ahead of that. And while you may call it market manipulation, it just it may be a situation of them kind of putting their money where their mouth is, saying, this is what I think. How, how do you determine when it's okay and when it's not? And how is that different from somebody who is long a stock coming out and saying, I think this is a great buy? You could have manipulation on, on, on either side. I mean, there are long manipulation cases, and there also, there's also short side. I think it's the short side that we tend not to see the, the level of enforcement initiative that there probably should be. There are accurate shorts. I don't want in any way disparage the short market. But if, if Markopoulos really believed what, you know, everything that he was writing, why go public? Why not let the SEC and DOJ do their jobs? Why try to because influence the Because I'll make the, the argument just on his behalf. Look, I, I, I don't know which side I come down on. I think there may be right on both of these. But last time he tried that, when it came to Madoff, it didn't work. Nobody listened. It wasn't until he went public that people paid more attention. But you also did not have an SEC whistleblower program that program that is as active as it is as it is right now. And the, the challenge is when the SEC is looking at the, the the activities of the corporation itself. In this case, GE. There's a tendency not to look as as, as closely at the short side publicly dis, publicly disseminated information that can adversely impact the stock. Hmm. Harvey mentioned materiality. Look what happened to the price of the stock. Clearly was material. The real question the real question is what was the intent behind you know behind issuing the information publicly and is he accurate? He stepped up the risk to himself hmm. and to others by going public as opposed to letting the SEC run its process. Harvey, this is a complicated one, and it, it, it's going to take a while, I would guess, for the SEC to kind of wade through both sides of this. Well, the SEC has an important task ahead of it, which is first to find out if the market was deprived of necessary information. One of the ways you can test Markopoulos's bona fides, however, is the mm. fact that the SEC has a whistleblower provision, and if he had brought all of his data to the SEC first, he would reap um, potentially up to 30 percent of the potential recovery that the SEC might obtain in connection with this case. Instead, what he did was go public, blast the company without giving the company a chance even to address his concerns. 
those are factors that make this look suspicious. Mm -hmm. On the other hand, this is a company that is under investigation and where there are serious questions. And until the SEC and the DOJ unravel the fundamental question of whether General Electric's um, accounting was appropriate, I think Markopoulos becomes, to some extent, a secondary issue. Do either of you have a, a view on the merits of what he, of, of what he actually said? Meaning, have, have you read the report and said to yourself, hmm, there's, there's a problem here, or, or mm, there's not a problem here? Um, I have read the report, um, but I will uh, first say I've read it cursorily. Secondly, I think that there are some very impressive people on GE's board. Its uh, CEO and its board are relatively new, mm -hmm. so we're dealing with events that in large measure preceded their tenure. And one of the members of the board, uh, Leslie Seidman, used to work for FASB, which, as you know, sets the accounting standards. These are not people who are ignorant of the critical facts. And it strikes me that it will take some doing to suggest that they somehow either were not smart enough to figure out these problems that Markopoulos no. has said exist or that they were willingly blinded and refused to see the issues that they knew about. Well, Leslie, we should point out, has only been on the board since last year. She did say that they are in the process of a review of looking at all of that, and we'll hear more maybe in the third quarter about it. But, uh, gentlemen, I want to thank you both for your time today. Obviously, um, a very complicated issue and one I'm sure that we'll be talking about for quite some time. We appreciate it.